All right, Mike Farron is with us, MLB Network Radio. Let's get back to the first week of the regular season. Padres 3-3 three and three offensively performing a lot better, at least in the early going, than they were a season ago. So we'll get to that with Mike, who does a great job on all things baseball for MLB Network Radio. We appreciate your time, as always, Mike, in San Diego. I want to start with Tommy Pham. What is the holdup here in general? Why is Pham, in your estimation, still a free agent? So he hasn't gotten a contract that he feels is worth signing. You know, I mean, I, I think there's... You know, listen, as much as guys like playing, I think there are, you know, I think there are players that want to be shown the respect that they deserve for, for what their careers have been. And I think, you know, Tommy Pham was coming off a really strong season overall and probably looking at making less money than he did a year ago. And he wouldn't be the first guy to back away from offers because he wasn't getting what he was worth. And, and so I'm sure that that's, probably the case i mean i can't see you know sam's bounce back last year for what the eight million bucks was a, a, pretty much a steal right for the production that both the the mets and the, the diamondbacks got for him i i just i think it's uh, as much as anything it comes down to money and you know if you're in a financial position where you don't have to take a, a job and you can be like hey listen i'm ready to go when when you want to meet my terms i wouldn't blame them for sitting around and waiting Mike, what was your reaction? Because we haven't talked to you since it happened, but what was your reaction when the Padres traded uh, for Dylan Cease? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty it, – it, it was one of those things where it was like we had been talking about it um, as it started to ramp up with Texas, and as soon as we heard that the Padres were involved and that the White Sox personnel was out seeing the Padres system, we felt like this was probably going to be a good fit. But they their need was probably more pronounced than Texas is, even though Texas has a lot of uncertainty in their rotation. Um, you know, it was, I thought it was a pretty good return that the White Sox got all told, which you would expect for a guy who, who is ceases quality and who has a couple of years left before he hits free agency. Um, but I thought it was, a, it, it made things a lot better for the Padres, right? I mean, they've been trying to replace a lot of these innings that they lost via free agency, and they've gone about it in ways by adding, you know, depth in the Soto deal, um, and and it should, it's not fair to just call it depth because you know, Michael King's pretty good, um, you know, seven walks the other day not, notwithstanding. Um, and, and being able to bring Cease in gives them a chance to have a pretty strong front four in their rotation. So, I don't know, I think there's a lot to like about what the, the Padres did. And, you know, again, it's, this is A.J. Preller's confidence in his farm system and, and confidence and ability to use it to acquire – star major league players, which he's done a really good job of. They have not gotten over the hump, but I mean, he's certainly not afraid to acquire them. And, and just as an aside, this was kind of interesting. It was in Padres camp this year for our, our spring training tour. And AJ unprovoked said he was really excited about this group of prospects they had. Now this is probably four days before the seat deal. So Drew Thorpe was kind of included in this bunch that he talked about at double A and lower. And, you know, Ethan Salas gets a lot of the attention and, Rightfully so, and they're very excited about Leo DeVries, who's the top international signing this year, and um, you know a number of these players that are coming. But he's very, very bullish on the organizational depth that they have, and I think you've already seen some of that you know, coming to the big league level with Jackson Merrill being entrusted with the center field job, and you know Graham Pauly uh, hitting pinch homer the other night. Like these are guys that they really feel like this is the first time I've heard him go out of his way to to praise the farm system. It's a lot different than when Scott Boris was talking about the hot talent lava. Hmm. Yeah, that's a great point. Mike Farron, MLB Network Radio is with us. Good segue, actually. I was going to ask you about Boris and Snell specifically. I mean, obviously we know Blake ends up with the Giants. Did Boris and Snell make a miscalculation? I mean, did they have that larger Yankees offer, whatever it was, five or six for that 150 neighborhood, and then they pivot now they get a 30-ish AAV for one or two years here from the Giants. What happened in the market for Blake Snell? Yeah, I mean, I just don't think there was that big a one in the end. And, you know, listen, like, for, for all of the talks of the the um, of the Scott Boris Scott has come up in, so, I mean, Blake Snell has, like, still the six moves of, like, the eighth AAV ever for hmm. a starting pitcher. So, you know, like, we should we should all be so lucky, right? To sure. <laughs> yep. All upwards like that. You know, I think but your boys kind of addressed this. I don't know if you guys read Bill Shakin's Q and A with him in the LA Times this weekend, but it, it was really informative. And in it, he said that there were a lot of teams that that were pretty 
public him or, or about their questions about the performance of all of his free agents because all of them have been inconsistent, right? You know, so Snell has had two great seasons. He's been pretty good in the other ones. He just hasn't thrown a huge volume of innings. Um, you know, you could look at Bellinger, right, who had a ton of um, injury issues that really plagued him for two years when he had this bounce back last year where the data didn't really support the bounce back that he had. You know, Matt Chapman has not hit consistently the last couple of years, and he is an incredibly valuable defender. And while teams value defense, they value it when they can get it cheaply, not when they have to pay for it, right? So, like, you start going down this list. You know, Jordan Montgomery is a really good pitcher, and I thought it was a great signing for the Diamondbacks. But I never bought Jordan Montgomery. I may have said the same thing to you guys as a nine-figure pitcher because that's just not the kind of pitcher that he is. I mean, he's good. Don't be wrong. He's a really good pitcher. But I didn't view him as a guy that was going to get, you know, seven years at, at, you know, 20 five plus or 20 some odd plus. So um, I think some of it was just that, that I, I think some of it is an assumption that we work with in the media, that Boris is always going to get the highest number for his clients and teams are smart enough to know which players they feel like they can invest in, which ones they can't. And the, the ability of these players is now that they can go and back up those good years that they had a season ago with another strong season. And if they do that, they're going to be able to opt out of the end of their deals. And their free agency is going to look a lot different this next year. It'll be similar to what happened with Carlos Correa, probably um, with the exception of having to go through two different sales physicals with teams, mm. but that same kind of idea. So <laughs> I think it's, I think it, it's, it's probably short-sighted to call it a complete failure, although it definitely does not fit you know, what we anticipate. That said, you know, we did have Jung O Lee too. And, and, he got what a hundred and fifteen million dollars, right? Those players that were twenty-five year olds who were professionals that that signed free agent contracts is what are still got paid, whether it was Lee or Yamamoto. With the Mike, Mike, with the you know addition of uh, like you said, Jung Hu Lee, and you had Blake Snell in the NL West, and then Jordan Montgomery here, like and Dylan Cease in the, in the NL West now, and you have the Phillies and you know the Mets to an extent. They're still spending a lot of money. With the entirety of the National League, does it feel like this thing could go any way besides the the Braves and the Dodgers, the top there? For the rest of the National League, it feels like this thing, there's a bunch of teams you know, together that could make the postseason this year. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, unfortunately, one of the teams in the Central is going to have to make it because right. that's the way the rules hmm. work, right? So, um, although I think Cincinnati is pretty interesting because I think the pitching is actually pretty deep. but. Um, you know, the Phillies are still really good. Like, that's a really good team. And so they're probably, I think they're closer to the Dodgers than the Dodgers on the Braves. Really, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Dodgers will have, they spent a lot of money this winter, but they still have a significant amount of question marks based on injuries. Now, their lineup, as it's already shown us through the first the six games they played, is going to be really, really good. But, you know, they have, I, I think they have some experienced questions, at least when it comes to their pitching depth. Um, and they certainly have a number of guys that have had injuries. You know, I think the Diamondbacks are really good. They are a way better team on paper than they were a season ago. Um, Eduardo Rodriguez and Jordan Montgomery are now their third and fourth best starters. And that's going to take Brandon Fott, who, you know, was a postseason breakout star and put him into a five spot. I mean, that's a legit rotation with a much deeper position player group. You know, so those are kind of the four teams that you start with. And then it's like, you know, the Padres, the Giants, the Mets, you know, maybe the, you know, if it's like the Cubs and Reds potentially or, or Cubs, Reds and Brewers at the top of that division. Like, yeah, it starts to get a little closer there. But I actually think that there's a little bit more separation there with a few of those teams. I, those four that I mentioned, the Braves, the Dodgers, the Phillies, and the Diamondbacks, I would be very surprised if all four of them did not make the playoffs. And one of those teams this postseason would be a shocker to me. Hmm. Mike Farron, MLB Network Radio, with us on John and Jim. So uh, obviously you can't you, you can't overreact to six games. That's what the Padres have played. Do it, overreact. But we're going to overreact. I'm kidding. What, what's interesting <laughs> to me, Kevin Ac and the UT wrote something that fascinated me. A year ago, they didn't have a four run inning until their 28th game. They didn't have a five run inning until their 54th game. And I want to say right now, through yesterday, they've had three five run innings and three four run innings. I, I get it. It's early and they're three and three, but what do you make of the improved Padres offense, at least seemingly from where they started last year? 
I, I will uh, quote the great uh, baseball philosopher, John Sterling, uh, the voice of the Yankees, who would tell you, well, you know, you just can't predict baseball. So true. I think that's probably the biggest thing. It's not like Manny Machado. It's yeah, baseball, it's right? It's baseball. It's baseball. I mean, it's just like, it's like that, that Padres team should have been way better last year, right? Like, mm-hmm. based on the number of, you know, they like, yeah, outscored their pumps by like 100 runs. And even though the offense wasn't as good as it probably could have been, um, they still led the league in ERA, right? They they were I mean, they were a good team that just for whatever reason couldn't win close games. You know, whether that was the disconnect between the manager and the general manager was bad, or it was just baseball happening, I would have been surprised if he hadn't run that whole group back and performed better. So I don't know that I want to put any too much stock on the first six games of the season. And they still have really good players. You know, they've got Fernando Tatis Jr. on opening day. They didn't have him until what about the twenty eighth game of the season last year, True. right? So, you know, that that's that's a big boost, right? They still they should have a healthier Xander Bogart than what they had through most of last season. Manny Machado, from talking to Manny in spring training, feels a lot better than he did at any point last year when he was dealing with the elbow issue. But that has plagued him since twenty twenty. Think about that. That guy was dealing with like significant tennis elbow that was significant enough that it required surgery and he still played every day for three years like nobody should ever question manny's toughness ever that dude posts right like so i just think that there's you know, you're probably gonna get better performances out of those guys i don't know that they're quite as deep i think jake cronenworth could certainly bounce back i think you have a better version now of Hassan kim than you had uh than you knew what you had going into last season um, Luis Camposano is going to be pretty good offensively. So, like, could they be a better offense than a year ago? Yeah, they could. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't like, I don't think their personnel is necessarily better overall. And, and it's six games. Like, there's just not a whole lot we can glean from six games. Like, just remember the Diamondbacks won 84 games. They lost the last four of the regular season. They were outscored by, what, two, almost 20 runs on the season. And they went to the, the, the World Series by, in part winning the first five games they played in the postseason. So like that's just it's just one of those things that happens. So I'm not gonna draw any conclusions based on um, what we've seen though. All right. So I heard World Series. No. <laughs> <laughs> sweet. So based sweet, on that, Mike. Sweep no, in the World <laughs> Series. Yeah, that's what we got. Mike, we always appreciate it. We're excited for the season to be back. We hope to do it again soon. Thanks for taking some time for San Diego. Thanks, Mike. Yeah guys, I know we've been trying to connect for the last couple of weeks. I'm sorry my schedule's been crazy. No, this is terrific. Time. I love coming out with we we enjoy it. Thank you. Mike Farron, MLB Network Radio, who is so good. I mean, he knows everything about every team, which is hard to do in a sport like Major League Baseball. You know, I didn't even – when I asked him about the uh, like the, the bunch of teams in the National League. Other who did you not mention? No, no, I didn't. I mentioned everybody. Okay. But it was interesting to hear him say, I didn't even – like the Diamondbacks, the Phillies, the Dodgers. Dodgers Braves. Braves. Like he those, says they're separating. They're separated. And from I, the rest. From the rest. And I'm like – and he'd huh. be shocked if those four teams, all of them, yeah. didn't make the postseason. So then it puts two spots. Two spots. For everyone else in the National League, which would be 11 teams. Giants, Padres, Cubs, Cardinals. Cubs, Cardinals. Well, well, one of the teams will make it. It's actually one spot because he didn't mention someone in the Central. What if, what if the the last two spots are like 82, 83 wins? I think you can see, I, I think you can envision like the Cubs getting around 82 wins or 83 wins or the Brewers. True, or but no, Cardinals. hear me out. If if he's got Braves, Phillies in the East, yeah, Diamondbacks, Dodgers in the West, that's four of six, right? But it's really five of six because but only, someone's winning the Central, and there's only one spot because the Phillies and the right. Diamondbacks would two be of those wild cards wild are card taken teams. up, and someone has to win the Central. To his point, which leaves one spot for San Diego, San Francisco, someone else in the Central, someone else in the East, yeah, the Reds maybe, yeah, right. If they don't the win Mets, the Central, maybe. Yeah. Even though the Mets are it's interesting when already you see, in meltdown mode at the three games true. of the season. But when you put it that way, and again, funnier things have happened. I bet Mike would have told us not to put words in his mouth. I bet he would have said, heading into last year, if we asked him April 1st last year, he would have told us he'd be shocked if the Padres didn't make the postseason. He would have replaced the Padres with the Diamond Bat. Like he would have probably would have said Braves, Dodgers, Padres. See, he's Phillies. hot. Listen, I, I I'm all for the positivity off a team that went to the World Series like Arizona that's added. Yeah. But the projection sites, which aren't always right, just like human beings, aren't higher on Arizona. There's no separation between Arizona and the rest of the NOS. As in, it's not like Arizona and LA. No, it's LA than everyone else. I mean, 
they're still they're a really good team. I know, but don't you agree? Like when you look at these sites, it's saying Arizona's going to win 84 games, I agree. and San yeah. Diego's going to win 84. Like games. how quote unquote better are they than the Padres? I don't, uh, or, the, or the Giants, or right. whatever that that like. Do I see the Diamondbacks winning 90 games this year? I mean, they have a really good they have a good team. They have a good chance to do it. Their pitching is really good. Their lineup, young players, are really good. See, I kind of like I, I like it, but I also don't like this idea that it's April first, and you're like, well, there's one spot available. Like, you're not going to win the division because you have the Dodgers, and you're not going to be the top wild card because there's the Phillies or the Braves. You're not going to be the second wild card because, like, we have to let it play out. Like, to this point, it's like it's six games. You can't draw conclusions. Are we already going to give the division again to the Dodgers? Like, at what point do you say the Dodgers have won the division? They start out 15 and five and say, I know he's catching them. Yeah. Or they're 40 and 30 and nobody's catching. Like, you got to let the thing play out. Like, what do you make of the uh, uh, the Pittsburgh Pirates? Who are, are like 3 and 0 or something? Who are 5 and 0. 5 and 0. Nothing. Just like, what do I make of the A's nine game winning streak last year? Nothing. I mean, the, the seasons are long for a reason, is what I make of it. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. And that's why. To his point, I agree with him. It's like, I'm not going to make anything of six Padres games. Yeah. Nor have we really. These. This is the part of the season where you only worry about yourself. Exactly. You only worry about yourself. You don't You don't even. I bet you ask anybody in that clubhouse after the first month of the year, they'll have no idea what any other team is doing. Probably. Other than maybe Jackson Merrill, who continuously wants to talk about, like, the Dodgers and, the, and everyone's like, you guys are talking about the Dodgers too much and no one's talking about us and I'm keeping receipts. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, how about just, just worry about, right. Just it's worry early. about ourselves. Relax. Guys. Yeah. yeah. Like, who, who cares right now? Just, just get on base, you know, have good at Calm bats. Calm down, Rock. Yeah. Calm down a little bit. It's okay.